Greetings, programs. This is Rich. Welcome back to World of Warcraft Legion. Now, here at Deliverance Point, we have an intact mage tower, and that's about it. Everything else is in crumbles. But I took care of a world boss off camera, and I guess that completed this quest for uh, Maiev Shadow Song. Let's see what happened here. The wardens are watching. A fine victory, Shadowblade. But do not grow complacent. Fight back against the Legion wherever they strike. 38 gold. My vigil continues. Defending Broken Isles. Okie doke. Now, let's see what Valen had in store for us. We must unite against the Legion. In my life, I have witnessed many visions. Some filled me with hope. Others with despair. Victory over Kil'jaeden lies within our grasp. I have foreseen it. But visions only show us where our path might lead. They require effort to become reality. That effort falls upon your shoulders, Swindlegear. You have done much, but more is needed. Fight on the battlefields of the Broken Shore and forge a destiny free from the Legion's grasp. Complete 12 world quests on the Broken Shore. And 3.3 million artifact power and 50 Legion Fall War supplies. Not all wonder are lost. Oh, I forgot that he talks with the accent. As most and I do. Space goats. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and look at our brief here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, that's the quest telling us to complete 12 world quests. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight here. Ooh! Including a worm tongue cash key. So let's go ahead and head that direction. Let's check the calendar, see if anything new has happened. Um, Dark Moon Fair is going on. The Legion Dungeon event has started today. And it looks like the Spring Balloon Festival um, starts this week as well. Might have to go check that out and see what's going on. And that is not the way to worm tongues. Let's travel on this way. So on a some have something not not really to talk about in an extended format, but it's something I am slightly worried about. I don't know if you guys have ever dealt with it, but have you ever had a friend that you knew in an online capacity basically have an online blackout? What I mean by that is they essentially disappear off the grid. I've had that happen um, over the last two weeks or so, actually longer than two weeks. But it's actually really concerned me. Um, I have an acquaintance online named Natalie Green. She is also a YouTuber. Um, I, th I discovered her watching a, uh, her reaction to Star Wars The Force Awakens, like the first trailer that came out. And uh, let's go ahead and go for the, uh, I gotta go for the arc. Nice. 4,000 nether shard. This should get us just what we need. Or actually over what we need. To uh, get another piece of gear. Actually, we might be able to get two if we play our cards right. But anyway. I remember watching, her, watching this reaction video and going on her channel and seeing some of the stuff she did. It was a lot of geek-centric stuff. She did makeup tutorials on how to do like venom face and body paint and carnage just some really cool stuff and at the first RTX that I ever no it wasn't RTX what was it SGC um, the first SGG, SGC I went to in 2015 I believe um, I saw her there doing some N64 gaming and uh, played her and her friends at Super Mario Kart 64 ah so many people talking hush all of you Oh, good lord. <laughs> Everyone's talking. Alright, is everyone shut up now? Okay, good. But what had happened was um, played Mario 64 with her, had a good time, talked to her a bit online about stuff. I mean, it was it was all very, very casual. Kind of, hey, are we excited about this movie coming out, this mo or, you know, this game, blah, 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 blah. And she's always something, someone I've I've kept up with, and even if it's probably not, uh, not the I don't know. 
it, it's kind of hard to explain. But I've just been kind of bugged lately because all of a sudden I realized going through my subscriptions that one of the channels I was subscribed to doesn't didn't really exist anymore. So I was that was very weird and I looked it up and it was actually Natalie's um, YouTube page. And she kind of really prided herself on being a YouTuber, I thought. And not only was, and then following through on that, not only was her uh, YouTube profile gone, but her Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, like social medias I had never even gone to. I looked at them and they were all gone. So I don't really know what happened to her. I'm honestly slightly kind of worried. It may be just a typical, I don't want to do stuff online anymore, which is completely fair, and I don't blame her in the least. But it's kind of weird when you have that person, or you, just, not have that person, but you have just people that you follow, and then all of a sudden they disappear. That's happened with quite a few uh, YouTubers. I remember there's been always the talk of, oh, what was her name? She was the busty girl with the cat ears, Hannah Minx. Hannah Minx was pretty popular on YouTube, and then she disappeared. Um, there's another reactor called Skylocks, I think, who does a, who did a bunch of reaction videos and gaming videos, and um, he disappeared too without any warning. Just all of a sudden gone and hadn't posted a video in like eight months. So it's always kind of weird, especially when you build. Um, when you build like friendships or acquaintances, acquaintanceships or whatever, even just a rapport with your audience, and then all of a sudden just, nope, that person's gone. It's kind of a, a strange thing, the internet at times. But hopefully she's doing good, you know, she's in good health, and I think she was, uh, uh, the stuff that she was doing in real life was very important, so, you know, maybe that's just the case. Regardless, it's just something that's been kind of on my mind lately, and I know I was rambling big time there, so <laughs> I apologize trying to focus on this because these guys can kill you very quickly if you're not in the totem range. There we go. And it's, it's kind of weird, especially for a self-professed hermit like myself. Is I don't follow a whole lot of people online. The people that I tend to pay attention to online are not that numerous. But being a hermit and not having a whole lot of social interaction in the first place with people, other than at my work, hey, those, those few people that you tend to follow become important. They're kind of like a keystone. Even if they haven't posted in a while, they're still like, hey, this is, this is kind of part of my circle in a lot of ways, the things that I tend to pay attention to and focus on. I think it's maybe something I need to change. As I've, It's either something that I realize at my current state in life I either need to like change or embrace fully. Whether to completely stay a hermit or kind of get out of that shell slowly but surely. And actually, Vanessa, I think, is making this a little bit harder because we're trying to drag these guys over here, and when they break out of the stun, they want to cast. There we go. Well, there's Burning Felsinder slain. Now we gotta s kill Cinder in the Ever Burning. Are you Cinder? Oh, nope. No, you are not. I assume that is this big corpse here, which means there should be a respawn any moment. What else do we have to do? Um, Ravage Supplies, we've done that one. The Demonic Portal, Void Weaver Slain, Mana Root Applied and Felborn Killed. I don't think we've done that one though. And, oh, I heard that sound. I was like, please don't let an elemental land on my head. That would be bad bodies disappeared. So we're just gonna have to go all the way around the island, making the rounds. So let's wait for uh, the big boss here to respawn. There you are. Come here, biggin. 
Now we're using the full dread blades here. And I figure those fireballs from you would hurt quite a bit, so. And I refuse to find out if that is the case. When our war against the Legion ends, let us hope the Earth and Ring finds a way to restore balance to this scarred land. Yeah, leave it to the shamans to uh, pick up after everyone. Ain't that the way. Well, let's head to the uh, tomb proper. Is this a bridge? Yes. It's kind of hard to f find your way around this place. Yeah, I would have fell right into the green goo. Oh. You are not a nice person. And Felborn Trapper. I'm glad that cat could not see stealth. Felborn Trappers are using their twisted magic upon the wildlife here. Take this mana root salve and apply it to any wounded animals you see. Hurry, before the corruption takes hold. I didn't know that uh, there was wildlife here of a non-demon variety. Mountain Prowler. Oh. Okay. Healing ointments. And hopefully none of these guys will bite us in the face. And show how grateful they are. Animals are still animals, after all. It's like that proverb of the scorpion and the... I think it's the scorpion and the snake? Or, no, it's the snake and the rabbit. Or whatever it is. I don't know if you guys have ever heard it, but... It's... Uh, it's a proverb about things in her nature and what they can't help being but themselves. I'll go ahead and use a rabbit as the, uh... No, it's a fox. It was a fox, I think. But, um, there's a river. And th I think there's like a fire or some sort of calamity. And both a snake and a fox have to cross this river. And the snake convinces the fox... You, let me go ahead and slither on your back so you can carry us both across. And the fox is like, well, why would I do that? And it's like, well, I, we're both going to die. Just come on, save me. I'll be forever grateful. And the fox is like, all right, since I'm saving your life. And the snake gets on the fox's back and they go across the river. And as they're going across the river, the snake bites the fox. And the fox feels the venom sinking in, and he's just like, you know, why did you do this? We're, we're both going to die now. We're both going to drown. You can't swim. And the snake goes, well, I'm a snake. It's my nature. I'm out of range. So, uh, sometimes with animals, even if they're nice and cuddly looking, that may not be the case. And, and this is coming from someone who owns a pit bull. And he, she's like one of the most adorable dogs on the planet. But you still got to be careful sometimes, because they are <laughs> very muscular and at times very, very violent creatures, dogs can be. And sometimes you don't know what will set them off. Now, fortunately, I have been very uh, fortunate never to have that happen. I think that's because of good training and actually treating the dog in a caring, loving way goes a long way to preventing that, but I think it's probably more accurate in regards to strays. Because you want to be nice to a stray. You want to let it know that some something cares, or someone cares about it. Maybe willing to give it a home or a bite to eat. But if you're not careful, it may take a bite out of you. So, I grew up on a small ranch um, in New Mexico, and a lot is a, a ranch house with a lot of uh, a lot of land around it. And we had strays dropped off at the dead end street near our house all the time. But when it's, it was an adult stray, we always had to be careful with it because you never know. It may carry diseases, it may not like people with unfamiliar scents. Just something you always had to be on your guard about. Legion Flying Disc. Did I just do? These Naga has made a pact with the Legion. Um. Her people's lives for power. Oh, I got a flying. Go willingly, I have a flying mount. The price they must pay. Neat. Show them. And demon wings. That was pretty cool. So we do us kill the snake people. 
See, I made a proverb about snakes, and here we are killing snake people. It must be, uh, Providence. Here we go. Really excited. Um, kind of off topic to what we were talking about. I'm kind of going all over the place here. But, um, saw the trailer. The actual official trailer for Blade Runner. Uh, 2049. Oh, and guys, it looks so good. It's got like, the original music. The cinematography looks amazing. It's from the people who did Arrival, which is a movie um, from last year that, or I don't remember if it was the beginning of this year or last year, that I really wanted to go see, but just never got the opportunity. I should probably stream that sometime soon. But it looks like Blade Runner. It looks like classic Blade Runner. And you actually got to get to see in the trailer, I guess, how replicants are made. And Jared Leto is playing this character who... I guess creates them, and he's not Tyrell, which um, he adds to a whole bunch of questions because one of the original concepts for Blade Runner was, and if you haven't seen the movie, I apologize, but when Roy kills Tyrell, or Tydell, or however uh, his name is, it's supposed to show that he himself is a replicant. So, I mean, this this movie could go all kinds of different directions. And I actually like uh, Jared Leto's acting. I think he's he's very good, uh, Suicide Squad aside. I don't think that was his fault. I think that was editing and the fact that he was trying something... Trying something unconventional with a unconventional character. And it just... I don't think it applied well. But that can happen to anything. There's another ancient shrine... Don't know if I want to do that exactly. What do I have to do here? I have to kill... Ah! Everyone needs kills right here. Corruptors and fish people. Got a little bit of help there from a druid of the horde variety. Built horde tough. Corruptor and Lady Sathara slain, who I assume she's going to appear right there. And I could go ahead and sap, but eh, why bother? There we are. Whee! And we got one more Corruptor over here. I figure the Feral Druid can... Aww! Was that a warrior? Yep, that's a warrior. Came in and stole my kill. I'm out of range. Here, there's a corruptor we can shoot in the face. Aha! Much better. And I figure we can go ahead and end this episode with potentially two upgrades. And I need to do that with the ring and gloves. And there's the lady. Get close enough to tag her. And stun. And we should be good here. We're at least going to get the lion's share of these world quests done. And then I can go ahead and do the rest off camera. And we'll be in good shape. Fell fire, playing with green fire. Because that's always a good decision. I really do need to... The thing is, I'm so busy with my work and the games that I already have played on the channel, I don't have time to really commit as much time to Swindle as I would like in terms of getting his reputations and whatnot up. Who are you? Bone Crusher. Hmm. Um, getting his reputation and everything up so I can actually have a flying mount, because that's the only thing stopping Swindle. Is, uh, he's not exalted with anyone. Except for the Nightfallen. Or the Nightborn. Which one was it? Nightfallen, yes. So it just it's it, it would just be a grind. And kinda of one of the last things you want to do is just especially if you don't have a whole lot of time if you if you're time constrained, don't have a whole lot of time to play games and you want to play something other than WoW. Kind of worst thing in the world. Then Warcraft kind of feels like work, which it should never, ever feel. Oh, hey Lillian. 
What are you doing just hanging out? Jump over that crag, and I guess we will continue our ascent and see what's up top. Master, before they grow too strong. Ah, we got a cult of warlocks here. We need a pummeling. I like that. So, while I was traveling over here, I had a question I wanted to ask all you guys. Are you an offensive talker or a defensive talker? And what I mean by that is, are you comfortable starting a conversation with people you may not know as well as you would like? Because I was thinking about my normal experience when I go to cons, and I love going to cons. But it's also one of those things that I'm a very defensive speaker. I can talk with you all day long as long as you start the conversation. Just the thought of having to start a conversation with someone I, I don't know and I'm not particularly comfortable with, with no scruples, is, like, terrifying to me. Just that, that crippling social anxiety becomes crippling. And I'm, I'm curious how easy or hard that is for other people to do. I know some people who can just do it. They can talk to anyone. They don't care. But, I don't know, it just it's always made me feel really, really uncomfortable. Like, if... If I was at a con, and you guys saw me, for example, and said, you know, hey, Wretch, and, and wanted to talk about pretty much anything, I'd be completely okay with that, and would be very comfortable with that, but me going up to other people, that's probably one of the reasons, like, I don't do, um, when I go to cons and meet people that I would appreciate, like Jake the Snake Roberts, or something like that, I don't want to take a picture, because that would instigate that I would have to, or that would indicate that I would have to talk to them like even someone that I respect and appreciate and admire I wouldn't want to talk to I wouldn't want to initiate conversation with them and it isn't a fear thing it's just kind of ugh, uncomfortableness I don't know I'm weird mistress verdex I will be denied no longer no I, I think you're gonna be denied yeah, call it a hunch. And look at all your little supplicants. Ooh, I got disoriented there. Neat. You know what, let's go ahead and take out your binkies here first. There we are. It's a lot easier when these ladies aren't shooting me in the face with Balefire. That makes life a lot easier. And it looks like we have a mage here jumping in. And that should be all she wrote. And many succumb to its call. Those warlocks gave us no choice but to end their sinister threat. Okay. So let's look at what we have here. We've got almost 6,000 um, order resources, which is nice and 8,569 nether shard. I really should have spent more nether shard and see, saw if we could get something um, in, in one of the chests, but it's okay. Legion war supply, supplies? 110. Ah! You guys broke my stealth. I think you just walked right into me though. Oh, you. Here. Get blinded. So I'll head back to Deliverance Point, and we'll at least get one thing of new gear today, guys. Or, actually, I think I'll go ahead and do some of these world quests off-camera, because it's stuff that we've done. Yeah, the Void Weavers. Yeah, this is all stuff we've done before. But I'll do that on-camera, and see if we have enough for two upgrades. Oh lord. Okay, I've got to share this with you guys. Check this out. Um, I took Marius' portal, and I'm on a Legion command ship. So we got some pit fell guards. Now's not the time, Smee. Yeah, just this little pug is just walking undetected to your pit commander. Who is immune to sapping. But not shanking. Aha! Go ahead and unleash some hell here. And it looks like someone just jumped, came in to join me. Oh, all the demons are here. Get to it, cannon crew.
trying to cast Drain of Fire. No thank you. This is uh, strangely familiar to the last thing that we did in fighting the Valshara invasion. There we go. Am I fighting all these guys by myself? Okay, no I'm not. Oh, Marius. Oh, it's Marius and Ted are helping us. And it's actually Ted's portal, not Marius's. There we go. Now get out of there before reinforcements find you. I do have to say that uh, Illidan's been doing a really good job since he took charge of the Illidari again, and just the overall offensive. It's cool to see such a, a potent villain in the Warcraft mythos kind of turn around and become a good guy. If only they could have done that with Arthas. <laughs> I think a lot of people would be pleased, or have Arthas come back as the big villain to uh, Champion, fight Illidan. We've spotted the wreckage of a horde airship. And Securing so we got the airship the and the cargo dock. boxes. So let me take care of this off camera and I'll see you guys back at Deliverance Point. So we're back at Deliverance Point. Let's throw in some contribution to the war effort. And we're also getting very close to our final gold dragon. Let's see where this takes us. 1.3. 2.1, 2, 3.3, .3. oh it is so close, nether shard and resources, I mean nether shard still nether shard, I won't say no to it, 8,644, man pardon me really wants to try and get that final dragon, but first, Let's go ahead and get some new gloves. I do believe that's what we needed. Let me double check to make sure. 860? Yes. New gloves, please. What do we get? Survey says... Fell treated gauntlets of the fire flash. 880. Well, better than a uh, stick in the eye. I'll take it, and we can sell all this stuff off for some decent amount of coin. And no more world quests are going to pop up here for for <laughs> a while. How many? How close are we? 3.7. Oh, I just need one little quest, don't we, for artifact power. Let's go for Wanted Rogozog. I'll take care of that for 1.7, and I'll see you guys back in the Hole of Shadows. And it's been a long road, guys, but with the usage of this item... There's the Dreadblades. And... Our final... Ooh. Your abilities have a chance to trigger Concordance of the Legion Fall, increasing your agility by 2,000 for 10 seconds. Holy crap! That's awesome. We have completed the skull and crossbones there, or crossblades. So, causes your next slice and dice to be 30% more effective. Let's go into our specializations, into our talent tree, and let's take Marked for Death and see what that does to Roll the Bones. Activating the Adrenaline Rush causes your next Roll the Bones to grant at least two matches. Oh, You know what? No. Don't be wrong, that's, that's kind of cool to have as a guarantee, but Slice and Dice overall with a attack speed and energy regeneration, that just makes him a more natural Cuisinart. So I think uh, good old Sully here is going to keep Slice and Dice and leave the dice to the actual uh, <laughs> Slice and Dice. <laughs> I see what that, I see the pun there. And um, kind of leave that to the gaming table. But not too bad, we got a lot done and I rambled like an idiot for about 30 minutes. <laughs> Sorry about that guys, I'll try and be a little bit more clear headed next time. But if you guys like the episode, please leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, that'd be a big help, and we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone. <laughs>